Thank you, John, for your kind words of welcome, and uh, thank you to the church for inviting Grace and myself here this morning. Uh, um, uh, we have we haven't been here, and uh, it, it's great to see so many here. It's just it's marvel, uh, but uh, but it's great to be with you. I'm not sure what what, uh, what way of the format you want to do it, uh, whether we show slides first or speaking from God's word. Uh, but what we will do is uh, we'll read from Matthew chapter 28. <clears throat> and then I think we'll have God's word first and then we'll, we'll do some slides. Matthew 28. I'm sure you could nearly quote these verses to me. Verses 16 to 20. Matthew 28, verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Then Jesus came and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your precious word. We thank you for the church here and we pray that you would bless them in, in all their outreach and everything that they do for you. And Lord, bless the children as they go uh, and, and are taught Sunday school this morning. Bless them and help them, Lord, early in life come and trust in you as Lord of their lives. Bless us as we look at, into this portion of your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Matthew doesn't give us uh, how many times Jesus meets with his disciples. If we go to Acts Chapter 1, and uh, we, we, we see a clearer picture in verse 3. It says he, he was with his disciples on a, on a number of occasions, uh, over 40 days. And, uh, but Matthew does give us this account. And this is a, a direct instruction from the angel at the tomb to the women and from Jesus when they were running uh, to tell his disciples, Jesus meets them and he says, tell my disciples to meet him on this particular mountain. We don't know the mountain in Galilee, but this particular mountain. When Jesus meets with his disciples, they worship him, but some doubt. Is it really him? They're struggling, they're confused. When he comes closer to them and then clearly they see who he was and to help them uh, he speaks to them and he shares with them. He tells them these, these verses as they are written down here. In these verses, Jesus uh, gives to his disciples and he gives to us today. We will see three things from them. We'll see, first of all, his assurance. And then secondly, their task or commission. And then thirdly, uh, his comfort for them. So first of all, his assurance. The dictionary meaning of assurance of the word assurance is a positive declaration that a thing is true certainty that that is a great word certainty as well assure certainty make sure and jesus knew they were as i said con uh, confused and struggling so he comes to them to really settle them down to assure them to assure them, to convince them that it was truly him and that what he would say to them would encourage and help them in their work for him and for us. And that's he, what he does for us today. He, uh, he assures us and he encourages us in the work that we are to do. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Someone who says that, who says, I have all authority, must prove it. If I was to say to you, I am the greatest footballer in the world, 
you, you would say to me, right, okay, prove it. Prove it. Let's see what you're like on the football pitch. Have you, what, what team do you play for? What trophies do you have that claim that you are the greatest footballer? Yeah, you would ask me all those questions. But if I came along and a, and a young man called Ronaldo was standing here and a young man called Messi he was standing here, ladies, these are footballers, uh, and if these two men, they would say, I am the greatest. I am the best footballer in the world. Why? Because they've won the Ballon d'Or. That's the top prize. They have won. Messi has won the World Cup. This other boy has won. Uh, Ronaldo has the European Championship with uh, Portugal. And they have won numerous trophies. And they could say, I have all authority. So how does Jesus prove that he has authority? Well, he has authority over sickness. When he healed the lame, the dumb, the, the mute, the blind, whatever. He healed all, many, many people. If you look in, in Mark's gospel in the first two couple of chapters, he heals uh, many people. He, he also has authority over the demons. When he went, first of all went into the synagogue in Capernaum, and someone stood up and said, Who are you? You're the Holy One of God. This man, he was possessed by a demon. And Jesus said to him sternly, Be quiet. Be quiet. And he was quiet. He was quiet. Yes. And, uh, and Jesus, as, as I said, they, he healed a number of people, not only just by touching them, but he also heals a number of people by not even seeing them. For example, the centurion's servant. And also in John chapter 4, uh, the official son who was 20 miles away. 20 miles away. And Jesus said, your son will live. He also, when the man is lowered down, he has the power over sin. When the man is lowered down at his feet, and he said, son, your sins are forgiven. He had the power over sin. He has the power over the elements when he, he calmed the storm. And he had the power over death when at least uh, three recorded in, in the Gospels, three recorded people have been raised from the dead and Lazarus was four days dead. Four days. And over people, when he called his disciples, he went along the Sea of Galilee and he saw Peter and his brother Andrew. He saw James and John. He says, come, follow me. And he walked along and uh, Matthew was standing there collecting uh, taxes. And he says, come, follow me. He had, he had that power over people. Come, follow me as the power to save people. And a number of them just left everything. And maybe you have left everything. And, so, and we know some of your, uh, your members have left everything, left everything, soul, soul living, and now are working in France. Yes, left everything. Maybe some of us haven't left everything. But yet Jesus has come into our lives. He has saved us from our sins and we now follow him. He has defeated himself. He has defeated death and sin by rising from the dead. Would this not assure us that he has all authority to help us in the work that we, that we look to do for him? Secondly, their task or commission. Their task or commission. He says to them, go. Even though you are small in number. There was only 11 of them at that stage. But on the day of Pentecost, there was probably about 120. Still small in number. Still small in number. And he goes, he says to them, go tell the people the good news. Go tell the people of all nations not only your own people, not only in Jerusalem 
or Judea, but to those in Samaria and even to the Gentiles. And they, when they become disciples, don't leave them high and dry, but baptize them and then teach them everything I have commanded you. There's, there's, I, I have heard a situation where someone has said, I can't see um, the concept of the local church in the New Testament. Apart from uh, Paul and others writing to all the different churches, this is the church. This is you. This is you. You're the church. You go and make disciples. You go and you talk to people, whether it's on doors or whether it's uh, speaking to people on the street or whether it's uh, young people, children and young people. You share the message of the gospel with them. And when they are trusting and come and trust Jesus, you baptize them. And then you teach them all that Jesus has commanded. That's the church. That, those verses, those verses that Jesus says, that is the church. That's what we do. That's what we do. Did his disciples fulfill what Jesus said? Or Jesus commissioned them? Absolutely. But it's not totally fulfilled yet until he returns. It's not totally fulfilled. Peter on the day at Pentecost preached about the life, death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. People were cut to the heart. And then that was them saved. They were baptized. About 3,000 were baptized. And then it says they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. That was the beginning of the church. That was the beginning and one of the, the seven deacons, Philip, they, 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 were, they were a church in, in Jerusalem for, for a good while. But then there was the persecution with, uh, with Stephen as they, they stoned Stephen to death. Uh, and one of the deacons, one of his fellow deacons, Philip and Peter and John, spread the message of the gospel to the people of Samaria. And also P Philip shared it with an important official at the court of Queen Candace of the Ethiopians who brought it back all the way back to Ethiopia and beyond into the heart of Africa. Peter brought the gospel to Cornelius and to his family. Whenever uh, this very, very much a stalwart Jewish man was stopped in his tracks when when he saw a vision of a, of a sheet coming down from heaven and it said, kill and eat. No, not so, not so, Lord. But then he realized, he realized that God was telling him that Gentiles can hear the message of the gospel. And he goes to the house and the Holy Spirit comes on them, just like it did on the day of Pentecost. And the people who were with them, the circumcised Jews who were with them, were amazed that these people received the Holy Spirit. And then it spread. It spread. The message spread. It went into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and it's still going out into the uttermost parts of the earth where you are, where we are, and right into the uttermost parts of the earth. It has been continuous, continuous, and we continue it, and you continue it today, to share, to take this task, this commission, and bring the message to the people here in your area. And finally, his comfort for them. Jesus comforts and encourages his disciples by not only telling them that he has all authority, but that he will be with them and he will be with you and he'll be with us as we bring the message to people we live with, we work with, and all the people 
wherever we are, wherever we're, where we are, in whatever town and village we live in, no matter what difficulties and problems you and I face, the Lord Jesus promised to be with us even to the end of the age. About 18 years ago, whenever Grace and I um, were asked uh, by Baptist Missions to go into Newry and South Armagh, at the minute it's South Armagh, but to go into Newry, South Armagh, um, we went for the, for the interview. And, uh, and one, of the, one of the questions was, um, if you're in South Armagh, if you, I don't know if you know South Armagh, but South Armagh is, a, is, a, is, a, is quite a rugged area. Uh, uh, there are village, towns and villages and so on, but it's, it's, it's quite a, an open uh, area and, and quite a rugged area. One, one, of the, one of the committee members said to us, look, what, what if you're stuck somewhere away out in South Armagh somewhere and you're saying to yourself, I've been doing this for years and I am banging my head against a brick wall. What are you going to do? Well, I brought him to verse 20. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We believe, we believe that God would do a mighty work in South Armagh. And we still believe that God will do a mighty work. As you believe, he'll do a mighty work here among you. We believe that God will do a mighty work in South Armagh. And that I would encourage you, I'd encourage you no matter you, you think into yourself, well, we're, we're struggling here. You know, we're really finding it very tough. And people aren't listening. But I would say to you, keep going. Keep going. Keep sharing the message of the gospel and know that Jesus is with you no matter what the problems are no matter what it is that Jesus is with you and as I finish are we assured by the words of Jesus are we assured by his power and his might to continue sharing his word and teaching his message are we comforted that he is with us and is guiding and helping us in our task of glorifying his name. I believe we are. Thank you. Um, Baptist Mission South Armagh, as I said, 18 years ago, <clears throat> Grace and I, we were living uh, if, if, in the north, we were, we were living in Fermanagh, in Lisnesky in Fermanagh. I hope, I hope I'm not too quick, am I? Am I not too quick? No, I know people are translating, I know. Uh, um, we were living in, in Lissnesky in Fermanagh, and uh, just to give you a wee bit of, of, of the family, uh, we have, have twin girls, Rachel and Judith, and uh, we, we, uh, we brought them as, as 10 month old babies to Fermanagh. Uh, my wife Grace is from Kilray in County Derry and uh, I'm from Newry and uh, that was part of the reason why the mission asked us to come to Newry, South Armagh because that's where I'm from. Uh, as I say, we have twin girls um, and uh, Rachel is a teacher and uh, she's teaching up near Kilray now and, uh, and, and, and Judith uh, is married to, to a teacher and his name is Lee and they've been living in England for a number of years and they've just returned. Lee has just got a job uh, last week, last started last Monday in Castle Blaney and uh, so he's teaching in a primary school there and we have uh, uh, Judith and Lee have a, a boy called Jaden who's four and a half and uh, a baby Azaria and she is uh, f 15 weeks now, 15 weeks, you know, so she is 15 weeks. So, so that's the family. But as I say, our girls were 12 whenever we moved to Newry and South Armagh. Well, Grace and I live in, in, uh, in Newry 
uh, and we work in, in South Armagh. And um, it, it started off Newry, South Armagh, but now uh, we're wor working mainly around South Armagh, and particularly in a, in a, in a town called Cross Midland. You've probably heard many times about Cross Midland. Uh, this is Baptist Missions. This is what you do and this is what we do. Proclaim Christ and we plant church. And that's what we're, we're aiming to do is planting churches in all of these. David and Hannah and their, their family are planting, uh, hoping to plant church. And I know they're working in Cascaron, Carasson, I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, at the moment. And they've just moved and the girls are settling, I know that. But in France, in Ireland, Peru, and in Spain, and uh, it's um, uh, that's that's what Baptist missions. That's what our motto is: to plant churches and to proclaim Christ to everyone. And that's what you do, and to plant churches. Count me in. Uh, um, and remember, I'm not sure what it is now, whether it's 11 euro or 12 euro or whatever it is. But uh, I remember Mervyn whenever he said, uh, "Well, where we are is 10 pounds," and and he would say to the young people, he'd say, "That's three coffees." Coffee's more than that now. That's more than three coffees. I'm sure it's more than 11 euro, uh, three coffees in, in some cafes or restaurants. You can see that, all right. I just can't. Um, and, uh, but but uh, it, it, you can ask us uh, about it afterwards. Uh, and that, that's what it is. And that would mean that would, if there was a 1,000, there's 700 now at the minute. That would mean about three more families going to one of these countries. Three more families to work in the area, and that's what it'd be, 10 pounds or 10 euro, or 11 euro uh, per month. Um, some of the things I've, I've always said, when, whenever first we first went to uh, Newry and South Armagh, to get involved in the community, I'm sure there are a number of you folk are working and get, getting involved in community, community activities here in this area. Um, some of, some of our folks have been, been doing that, and uh, I, I'm a volunteer in, in a, a thing called Gateway. Gateway, uh, Newry Gateway, is, a, is a, a club for adults with learning disabilities, because that's what I worked at in, in Lisnesky. And, uh, and that's how we do that. We also um, work on the radio. This is a community radio, a community radio. IURFM, IURFM, and uh, the, the uh, it was a number of years ago. I think it must be about twelve years ago. The guy who runs this, his name is Shane, and he he wrote to all the ministers and priests in the town in Newry and asked them if uh, they would do a thought for the day on the radio, and he got one reply. And that was Philip Brown. And Philip Brown was the pastor of the church. He's now retired. But Philip and I do the radio on a Sunday morning. And we have two hours of just opening God's word and this Christian music. And we have had people saying, beep the horn, heard you on the radio last week. And, and it's a great opportunity. If you get an opportunity to, to work on a radio, a local community radio, take it with both hands. Uh, this, is, this is the area where we, we work in. The border is the big orange uh, dotted line. The other side of Carlingford Lock is this to the right side is um, South Down and all these villages all around here, all these villages we have worked, we have done door to door uh, in, in all of these. Drummond Tea, Mullabon, uh, Cullihanna, there's Fork Hill is there but it's, it's not on the map. Uh, Balik, Kamla, uh, Cross Midland, and Colleville, and we've we've done um, door to door in all of these uh, um, villages and towns. But mainly at the minute we're working into Cross Midland. We've been doing a number of things in Cross Midland, and it's quite central. It's not far from Castle Glen, Dundalk, uh, uh, Newton Hamlet, and Collyhanna. Uh, it's quite central uh, there in. Uh, and then we have, we have done a lot of things in, in, um, in the community centre. Uh, we've done uh, the journey to the cross one year uh, in Lent for six, six sessions, six week 
uh, on a Wednesday night, we went, we went from Zacchaeus right through to the resurrection. And, you know, sometimes if, if, if you ask people to come along, people don't come along. You, you've gone and visited the whole town and nobody comes along. For the first four, nobody came along. And then uh, the fifth one, four men that we have met in the town, they came along and we had a great meeting and uh, uh, they heard the gospel. They heard the message of the gospel. But more recently we've been working, uh, we've been doing What's the Story? You've done, I know it's more of a southern thing, but some of the churches in the north uh, do uh, What's the Story? Now we were only able to do five uh, because we had a, a local government election uh, and it was the, the community centre was a polling booth. And as you know the subjects, there was uh, Podge Mulvihill did uh, atheism, there was one on suffering, there was one on death, there was one on um, sort of new age type thing and, uh, and they, were, they, were, they were really good. And you know the format with the... Uh, with a video and then someone get up and speak. Now, most of these folks are from the three churches that are involved, Armagh Baptist, Cady Baptist, and Newry Baptist. And, uh, but there's a man with a hat at the, at the door, and his name is James. And if you get prayer news, uh, I mentioned somebody called J and P, his brother P. So it's James and Paul, and uh, you can always remember them, and he came. And he always asks really good questions. And uh, it, it, was, it was really good to have him. This is a man called, uh, he was the assistant pastor in Armagh Baptist. He's from a place called Kilkeel, which is very much a, a fishing area. And uh, Mark did the subject of death. Very difficult subject. But when Mark was quite young, um, he could hear commotion downstairs. And he went downstairs and wondered what was going on. And uh, three of his family members, a grandfather, a father, and a son were tragically killed and lost uh, in a fishing boat accident. They were fishermen. And uh, they, they were lost. And, and he, he took that, that uh, meeting that night and he was, he was really brilliant. Mark's now uh, ministering in Calgary in Canada and uh, he's, he's moved there just in the last number of months. Uh, there was a man, there's a man called uh, Ian Bothwell who uh, has a, a, an operation called Crossfire Trust and he works here in Cross Midland and he always has a five day club and uh, not just for children but for young people as well. And uh, we had really good opportunities to talk to a number of the young, uh, young people who came along uh, to that, which is, which is really great. This is the fair. We go to the fair uh, twice a month and we talk to people, give out leaflets and share the message of the gospel with them. And people just come along and uh, we, uh, you know, they have different stalls and we just share and we give out leaflets and give out different things and we share the message of the gospel with them. Um, we usually go on the first Friday in December. Uh, now last year we thought to sing carols at the fair and we thought it was a bit early on the, the, second, the second day in September or December and uh, we decided to, not to have it on the first Friday but to have it on the third Friday, uh, the second fair. And, uh, but the only problem was that day it was minus five and as you can see, it is very, very cold. And, uh, but but uh, we have good opportunities to talk to people. And uh, we usually, on the first Friday of, of December, there's a, a coffee morning for the hospice run by a group uh, in the community centre. And we usually go over. And they welcome us with open arms and we sing carols. We tell them who we are. We tell them we're, that we're Baptists from the local uh, Baptist churches. And... Um, and they, they welcome us with open arms and we sing, we sing a number of carols for them. And then we sing carols at a nursing home after that as well. A number of years ago, uh, we said, what, what do people do 
in the afternoon. And th th there is quite a, a, a bit of unemployment in Cross McLean. And uh, we decided to go into the pubs. And uh, there's a number, a couple of pubs that we've gone into. And uh, you just, if, you, if you're ever doing any sort of pub work and you're giving out a leaflet, at that stage it was for you, that dot .ie magazine, and uh, just don't just go in and hand whoever's in the bar. Go up to the barman and say, you don't mind if I give, you, give out a few of these leaflets or magazines. And they will, they will allow you to open it, or they, they give you it. And one day, it wasn't actually in this pub, it was a different pub. I was able to speak to five men for an hour and a half about nothing else but the gospel. Four of them I knew, one man I didn't know. And for an hour and a half, we were able to talk to him. And when I go into this pub here, I was in there, we were giving out uh, a little leaf or a little booklet for, for another, uh, we're doing Christianity Explained in the community centre at the moment. And it's uh, once a fortnight on the Thursday. And uh, we, uh, we have been giving out uh, this, leaf, this little booklet called Why Read the Bible. It's very good, it's very clear, and it's very simple. And, uh, and people will listen, and we'll go, go on in to, to give out uh, this leaflet. And the barman, whenever I go in, the barman puts a cup of coffee on the bar for me, and a bar of chocolate as well, which is really good. But we've been uh, speaking to people, a lady in the community centre when we were giving out some of these leaflets, some of these booklets, Sorry, am I, am I, sh I should be here. Uh, she works in the community centre. Her name is Geraldine. And uh, she said to me, as I was in the community centre one day, she said, John, you're a Baptist, aren't you? And I said, that's right, Geraldine. Uh, and she said, what do you believe? And I love questions like that. I really love questions like that. But I knew I didn't. We were going to do doors, and I knew I didn't have a lot of time. But she said to me, John, I lost my husband two years ago and I would like to know where he is. That's, that's, a, that's a hard one. So I gave her one of these. I'd just been given a few of these um, by one of our, well, they're, they're not called Gideons anymore, but uh, by one of our Gideons in the church. And um, <clears throat> the next time I, I met Geraldine, she said to me, John, I didn't know that Jesus had brothers and sisters. So you knew that she was reading it, she was reading the Bible, and she has asked me really great questions. And then one day I was talking to her in the community centre, and she said, but, but what you're saying is that you need to be perfect. I said, right, Julie, you're absolutely right. You need to be perfect. And, I, and I, when I'm in the pub and I speak to the guys, I say, you can't be perfect. You can't be perfect. And you and I know we can't be perfect. But whenever Jesus gives you his robe of righteousness, whenever you come and trust in him, and he gives you his righteousness, not our righteousness, then we can stand before God. The hymns we're saying out this morning, we can stand before the Ancient of Days, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. That's right. And we're still talking to Geraldine, and we're still talking to a number of people, whether in the pubs or at the fair, and we're still telling them about the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, thank you for, uh, for supporting Baptist Missions, not only financially, but prayerfully. More recently, uh, as Mervyn gives a wee slot on prayer news, he would say, thank you for giving, but especially thank you for praying. Thank you for praying for us in this work and praying for all the workers in France, Ireland, Spain and Peru. And I usually leave with this and just as exactly these verses and that's what we're doing. We're sharing the message of the gospel. We're going into all the world and we're teaching people about the Lord Jesus Christ and what he can do for souls. You do it. You and we do it. We're a team. We're a team. Baptist missions, we can't do it on our own. 
We need the churches. We need you to help us by praying and by giving. And we thank you that you are doing that. Amen. I have some leaflets you'd like. Some of these booklets, no problem. You can get them out. I'll leave it over to John again. Thank you. Thank you, John. Um, we're going to close by singing our final hymn, uh, and in between we will have uh, communion. Uh, we're going to sing the first few verses of Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, uh, then we will share communion together and close by singing the last, the final verse of the hymn. Uh, let us stand together to sing. Amen.